Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And I'm just outside my door down in the woods near my house sitting by this uh, classic Appalachian Cove mountain stream that comes down out of springs and bubbles down through here through the rhododendron that you can see in my, in my background. The native rhododendron will be flowering in June and I'll bring you some episodes on that. But I just wanted to tell you, man, you got to go outside and observe spring. We've had such a active weather pattern from January to February here. We've had snow, we've had uh, repeated ice storms, we've had cold and below freezing temperatures, and it's really been quite a winter. And today I'm out in a t-shirt and I thought, let me go for a walk in the woods and see what I can find. Well, I found a wood frog, the eastern spotted newt, they're getting ready to start breeding, and I'm gonna do a special episode on breeding. Last week I found a moth species I couldn't identify and it might be a new record for the state of Virginia. This is a winter moth that overwinters as a adult and comes out early in the winter like this. So there's not a lot of information, a lot of data on it. I'm sending it to a moth expert and he's going to soon let me know whether it's uh, I found a new record for, for the state of Virginia, the first reported sighting of this particular species. So I'm excited about that. But the reptiles and amphibians, especially the amphibians, are suddenly becoming active. There's all kinds of plants. I already showed you skunk cabbage coming up. And it's just a really exciting time uh, to be out in the woods. So let me show you this black-bellied salamander that I found for this episode right after my intro. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this basic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So this is what I believe to be the black bellied salamander. This is actually the second one I found because the first one when I tried to film him, jumped out of my hands and back into the stream. So I came up this path, turned over three or four rocks, and by the time I did, I found this guy. Remember that the Appalachian Mountains are home to the greatest salamander diversity in the whole world. And people that want to study salamanders will come here to study them. To learn about the biology of this particular salamander, check out my video on black-bellied salamanders, and I'll put a link here that you can just click on to see it. But what today is about, today is about encouraging you to go outside and discover nature outdoors. And there's all kinds of amphibians that are being active at a much earlier time in the year than I think most people are aware. Like these amphibians, even though it's pretty cool, nighttime temperatures are near freezing, they're out, they're being active again, they're beginning to feed, many of them are starting to breed. And they're just so fascinating to see. If you pick up a salamander, be sure to wet your hands first. They have a very sensitive skin. Your dry skin in contact with their skin can remove some of the slimy coating on the outside that protects them. If you touch one of these salamanders and put your fingers in your eyes or in the mouth, many of the species have protective secretions that can burn or sting your eyes. So this one, I believe, is a black-bellied salamander because if you turn him over, you can see he is a, has a dark black belly or a belly with dark spots on it, and he is not very happy with me. And so after filming, I release him back exactly where I found him. So you saw where that black-bellied salamander wanted to go. He wanted to get right back under a rock as soon as he could get away from me. So where do you find salamanders like that? Well, in little creeks like this, along the edges, you can turn over rocks or logs and look in damp places, and you're likely to find some salamanders. But remember, always dampen your hands first before you pick one up. And when you're turning over rocks, 
or logs, always be sure to put the log or rock back exactly where you found it, exactly how it was, very gently, because it's really cool to observe and discover things in nature. But we don't want to mess it up. I'm an advocate of learning and curiosity and finding and discovering things so more and more people will appreciate nature and want to protect it and do things and enact and support legislation that helps for protect clean water like this, our environment, and especially these habitats. In addition to amphibians, you can also discover fascinating fungi like this one as you take your spring walks. So keep an eye out for flowers, amphibians, fungi. It's just a great time of the year to discover fascinating things. And don't forget, this is a good time to make your own do-it-yourself bug box for temporary collection of amphibians and insects that you might find. Some amphibian species are closely tied to ponds or water, but others are a little bit more independent. Like when I was growing up in New Jersey, 30 minutes outside of New York City, I would find redback salamanders outside my house under the garbage can. And they have gone to be almost completely independent of, of water. They're a terrestrial salamander. And in fact, I'm gonna, I have an upcoming episode on redback salamanders. So go outside, discover spring. I got coming episodes on the stink bugs that are getting ready to leave my house and go out for, for springtime. And they're in my house and I'm gonna tell you how they got there and why they're there. And I've got an upcoming episode on a wood frog, the redback salamander, and these are always based on what I find when I go outside. And after that, I don't know what I'm doing next because it depends on what I find outside my door. I am going to do episodes on spring woodland wildflowers. I'd love to hear more about what you find and what you see too. And you can post pictures on my Instagram account or on my Facebook. I'm at nature, I'm all nature at your door on Instagram and on Facebook. You can find me. I'd love it if you could share what you find with me. And if I can help you identify stuff, I sure will. Because I love interacting with my fans. I have been teaching biology for almost 35 years. I have a BS in biology, I have a master's in education, I have a master's in zoology. I've done a lot of research and presentations and written books and stuff. I would love to share this with you. I want you to go outside, find stuff, and together, let's discover all this great stuff together. See you in the next episode.